Good morning. I'm sorry I wasn't quite ready when Jerry ended that lovely piece. Thank you, Jerry. I was busy welcoming and talking to someone who's new to us today. I hope that you all will always do the same, even if it means you're late to church, even if it means you don't get the cookie you really wanted, even if it means you didn't get to talk to your best buddy. Because that's what we should be about, right, is welcoming each other. We know how to find each other, but so make sure you reach out and find people. I also want to let you know that I thought we weren't having cookies today, but because of Cheryl and Connie, Cheryl and Connie, they have scrounged around, and I would call it literally scrounging, and found the last cookies from the freezer. Did you hear what I said? The last. So guess what that means for next week? No cookies unless someone, there's a sign-up sheet outside, out here in the narthex. It's a nice poster for different weeks. Make friends, make a group, and sign up to do that. If you don't know how to do the coffee, I'm not sure that coffee is that important this summer. Nobody's drinking it anyway. Ice water, there's dispensers for it. I know for a fact that some of the people who do this all the time, Connie, Jean, Cheryl, would be happy to email you the instructions on how to make ice water. <laughs> would you? Yes. So on your way out after church, sign up and take a turn. Okay? Take a turn so we can continue to have goodies outside all summer long. Next Sunday, oh, Larissa moved. Next Sunday is chalk art. We did that last summer because it was a way to be outside and be together during COVID. What? Saturday? Saturday. There's Larissa back. Hey, Larissa, Saturday is chalk art? Yes, Saturday at 1.30. Saturday at 1.30. Be creative. So you don't have to be a child to come to this. It was so fun last time. You just have to be creative. And you really don't even have to be creative. You can just come and be supportive. If you don't want to draw, just come and tell people they're doing a good job. So come to that, now that we know when it is. The clothing drive is underway. If you've reached the end of COVID-ish and you're going, hmm, none of these things fit anymore, or I'm tired of them, or whatever, Here's a place to bring them, and we will use them to... Where are they going? Where are they going? Four Corners. Down to Four Corners. I knew that. One last announcement for you, which is kind of fun, I think, but... Some of you asked me last week, what in the world is W and S in the bulletin? When we're singing some song, it said W and S. Brian, who some of you have not met yet, Brian Dufresne, our director of music and worship arts would love to explain to you what W and S is. Scott, we're feeding back. I dare not say anything else until it's turned down. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Turn it down even more if you would, please, Scott. Thank you so much. Uh, well, worship and song is what W and S stands for. And it is a, it is a hymnal put out by the Methodist Church, but a lot of denominations are actually using it. Um, and you know, we have our regular hymnal, um, which was put out in 1989. We, 86, I thought I saw 89. Okay, thank you. And then we also have the Faith We Sing, which is another hymnal. Um, and that was put out in 2000. Well, in 2011, people thought, or maybe a year or two before, it's time to do something even, even more, whatever, whatever uh, direction we were moving in. Worship and Song is a, um, is a hymnal that we've purchased several copies of so that we can remain in um, compliance with copyrights and everything else. But um, we have not purchased yet, um, or maybe, who, who knows what's going to happen. Um, what we have not purchased pew copies yet. So um, the thing that about worship and song that is very attractive to, I think, I don't want to speak for anyone, but I think Stephanie, myself, and, and several other people um, just really like what worship and song offers. Most of their songs, well, none of their songs in that hymnal are um, from the previous two hymnals. So it's all either new music or readaptations of music. But one of the things that I love about that is 
that it's very progressive in terms of not only its theology, but its social concerns and social awareness and, and social justice. There's lots of language about inclusivity. And I think that that's really important in this day and age where we uh, need to be in as, as inclusive as possible. So it's a, it's a great hymnal that has um, uh, not only great lyrics, but the music itself. Um, there are modern pieces in it, um, and that they not not just modern in terms of their sound, but in terms of like the accompaniment, it's fuller and richer and has um, very colorful um, harmonies uh, in some of their pieces. And so I've, I find the hymnal to be very attractive. And we're singing um, the song that you are all familiar with, um, the If You Believe and I Believe, that's one of our responses. It's a simple piece of music, but it comes from that, if it comes from that book. So when you see W and S, W and S, well, that means worship and song. F W S is Faith We Sing, which is the second hymnal I talked about, and U M H is our traditional United Methodist hymnal. So now you know. Would you please, as you are able, stand with me and we will begin our call to worship. Our call to worship has sung parts and spoken parts and pua and I will lead you in that. <clears throat> one of several results of the Methodist Church's attempts to refocus and reduce the focus on secularism of Mother's and Father's Day celebrations. And Happy Father's Day to all. It was called the Celebration of the Christian Home, perhaps you remember that, which was only more or less successful. However, happy the home when God is there does talk about characteristics of a happy Christian home, positive parental example, Prayer, praise, love of one another, and in the last stanza, it moves from just the family and speaks of love for all outside the family. 
So while the hymn describes an ideal which is seldom totally achieved, Christian families may find such an ideal helpful in these times when the values of family life are threatened. This is happy the home when God is there. Please sing joyfully with me. Happy the home when God is there and love fills every breast when one their wish and one their prayer and one their heavenly rest happy the home where jesus name is sweet to every ear where children speedily speak his name and parents hold him dear. Happy the home where prayer is heard and praises want to rise, where parents love the sacred word and all its wisdom prize. Lord, let us in our homes agree this blessed peace to gain. Unite our hearts in love to Thee and love to invite the kids up. I think it might just be um, our friend Julia. Come on up and talk with me, friend. Come on up with me here. Okay, let's talk. So I know that you have a pet at home, right? Tell me what kind of pet do you have? You have a dog. And what is your dog's name? Daisy. So tell me, what do you do to help take care of Daisy? We feed her, let her out on walks, I bet you give her lots of love too, huh? Yeah, lots of pets and love. There you go. We do have to take care of our pets, don't we? Now, if you didn't give Daisy any food, would she just go and find something on her own? She would have a really hard time, wouldn't she? And she might find something that would make her sick, right? So we want to make sure we're taking care of Daisy and everybody else's pets by giving them food to eat. Now, if you didn't take Daisy out for walks, what would happen? She would get lazy. She would need to use the bathroom and wouldn't be able to. She might, yeah, she, she would just sleep all day and not do anything, right? Would that be a very healthy way for a dog to live? No, Daisy needs to go out and have walks to run, to take care of herself, and just to, to be out in the fresh air, kind of like we do, right? And if you just opened the door and said, Daisy, go walk, what would happen to her? She would get lost, exactly. So you are there to take care of her, right? You and your whole family. Um, I bet a lot of people in this room have pets, and I bet anybody who has a pet gives them food, gives them clean water, takes them for walks, lets them outside, and gives them lots and lots of love, right? Because that's what we do when we care about our pets. Well, I have a pet here. It's not really a pet we might see every day in our home, but what is it? It's a sheep. And now we know from lots of different Bible stories who takes care of the sheep the shepherds. That right, there's a shepherd who takes care of the sheep. And just like you take care of Daisy, the shepherds make sure the sheep has food, the sheep has times to go out and play, and the sheep feels loved, right? Well, today, if you listen to our scripture, you're going to hear that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. So if Jesus is a shepherd, who are his sheep? Us. We are his sheep. That's absolutely right. Does Jesus take care of us? He does. Does he give us what we need? He does. Does he give us lots and lots of love? He does. So I would say he's a pretty good shepherd. Don't you think so? I think it's pretty cool that we have Jesus to take care of us, huh? And give us all the love that we need. It's pretty awesome. Well, I've given you a sheep you get to make and you can take this home with you and it will remind you that Jesus loves you all the time, right? Will you pray with me? Okay. 
Hey, God, thank you for Jesus, the good shepherd. We know that he will always love us, take care of us, and teach us all about you. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. If you believe and I believe and we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. And set God's people free. And set God's people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. Before we start into this time of prayer, I forgot something really important this morning. I forgot to introduce you all to our new facilities manager. It wasn't on my sheet, so I just gone, forgot. So I want to introduce you all to Kyle Perez. He's there in the balcony. You'll want to take time to greet him later. You've read about Kyle, I hope, but we're glad to have him here with us to take care of our building. And he will be here on Sunday morning, so that will be really helpful because it seems that the building has trouble when the people are using it, doesn't it? I also want to remind you we're trying something new with these Joys and Concerns cards. They're in the back. So when you come in in the morning, if you want to have your joy or concern added to the pastoral prayer, Stop back there and fill that out. You can hand it to me or put it on my chair. You can give it to an usher. You can just leave it on the table. We'll make sure it gets here to me before this time. Something new to learn, but we're having fun learning new things, aren't we? So remember this if you want a joy or concern shared in the time of worship. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you this day remembering Remembering the stories of the shepherds with the, throughout the Bible. Remembering all of those places that shepherds guide us and teach us and help us learn. We are reminded this Father's Day of fathers who do the same, who help us to learn and to grow. We pray for them and we pray for those who could not father. We pray for those who in this day wonder, wonder about who will guide them who will shepherd them, and we ask that you would be present in their lives. We come this day, this beautiful summer day, ready to worship, ready to be with you, and yet we remember that in the midst of vacation and travel and family times that we get busy or that other things happen and that not every person here is filled with a time of joy. We ask that you would be with them, hold them in your heart, that they would know, that they would know your presence. Remind us that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Help us to understand what that means in our own lives. As we continue to learn and understand Jesus for each of us individually and personally, we pray these things in his name as we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before I begin our special music selection, um, I would want, want to let you know uh, what an improvisation is. We've all heard about, about improv and, you know, in, uh, uh, in comedy clubs and this sort of thing, but when we're improvising, um, it means that we have a piece of music, perhaps a musical line, maybe a rhythmic motif or something, but we're taking that and we're building a piece 
on it, uh, particularly in organ improvisation. Um, an improvisation can be as long as 30 seconds or 30 minutes or even longer than that. I won't keep you for 30 minutes, but this is based on a familiar hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, and we'll just see what happens because it's all made up on the spot.
beautiful, beautiful music, and now you get to listen to me drone on and on. I'm reading from John 10, 1 through 18, sort of. The story about the shepherd. Jesus said, I'm, I'm telling you what is true. A shepherd knows his sheep, in a, keeps his sheep in a safe place with a wall around it. There's a gate into that safe place. Anyone else who gets into that place by another way is not the shepherd. That person is a robber. He comes to take away the sheep that are not his. The shepherd goes in through the gate. The sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. He calls each of his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. They will run away from a stranger because they do not recognize his voice. Jesus told them this story like a picture to teach them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Jesus is like the good shepherd. So Jesus spoke again. He said, I am telling you what is true. I am like the gate for the sheep. All other men who ever came to the sheep before me were like robbers, but the sheep did not listen. Everyone who comes through me will be safe. The robber only wants to destroy the sheep, but I have come so that they can have true life and so that they can have everything that they need. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd would die so that he can save his sheep. Another man may work with sheep so that he gets money, but the sheep are not his own. A man like that is not the shepherd. If a wolf comes, a man like that runs away. When he sees the wolf, he leaves the sheep and he runs away. Then the wolf attacks the sheep causes them to run in all directions. That man runs away because the sheep are not his own. The sheep do not really matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. I know them in the same way that my father knows me. And they know me in the same way that I know the father. I will die so that I can save my sheep. I also have other sheep, and I must bring them too. They do not belong to this group of sheep, but they also will listen to my voice. So all the sheep will become one group, and they will have one shepherd. The Father loves me because I choose to die for my sheep. But after I give my life like that, I will become alive again. Nobody can take my life from me. Instead, I myself choose to die. I have authority to do that. I also have authority so that I can become alive again. My father has said that I must do that. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It feels like there's a lot today, a lot of things happening, and it sort of mirrors this week we've had. Someone just told me they were so glad it was Sunday so they could just take a deep breath and get refocused and be okay again because it's been a week. I don't know about you all, maybe you haven't had a week, but some of you have, and it gets that way sometimes, doesn't it? And this is one of those weeks. It started out kind of okay, but have you watched the news at all? A lot of things happening. There are places in our own state, for example, where COVID has run amok again, uh, for whatever reasons, and I don't know, but I've read that, and it's concerning to me. 
here in Boulder County, over 70% of us have been inoculated, so yay us. But in other parts of our state, not true. And it's that new variant is coming, and it's scary. Uh, that's happening around us right now. Other things that I read was when the president signed making Juneteenth a federal holiday, some people I know, yay, <laughs> some people I know got Friday off already. My sister works for the federal government. She works, she's one of the directors at the VA hospital in Orlando. They did not get the day off because they couldn't shift fast enough. They, hospitals can't just upend and take people off. Um, but they got double pay because they had to work on a federal holiday. It went fast, didn't it? All of a sudden, bam, a holiday. Usually it takes a while. Now, some would argue this has taken a long time, over 100 years, 150 years or so maybe since this became a holiday and should have been recognized sooner. But once it started, it was okay today, or I guess it was tomorrow. He signed it, and tomorrow we're starting right away. We're not waiting a year. And I want to remind us all about Juneteenth because we have a responsibility and a voice in that responsibility because my fear is this is what will happen with Juneteenth. It'll become a holiday. It'll be another month in the summer where we get a long weekend. A lot of times it may fall with Father's Day and how great to give dads an extra time off. But that is not what Juneteenth is about. Remember that. Most of you know the history and the story. Juneteenth is the day that the Union troops got to Galveston and said, haven't you heard? Don't you know? You're free. Haven't you heard? Don't you know? You're free for that last group of people in Texas who hadn't heard. So remember that. Next year, who knows, maybe we'll have a Juneteenth cookout and really celebrate. We also didn't regroup fast enough, but maybe we should have been doing that all along. But we'll look at that next year. But remember the reason. It's not just so we can have a holiday every month of the summer that there's a reason behind it. And we as people who believe in social justice, people who believe in mercy, we need to remind people why. And also making it a holiday, some of you have been seeing this, making Juneteenth a holiday isn't the end. It's just like when we became reconciling, that wasn't the end. It's to remind us that we still have a lot of work to do to make a difference in this world, to be sure that people remember, but also to advance, to advance this world around us, to continue to say not yay, raw, we're done, but what's next and what do we have to do? We want to remember that every Juneteenth and every other day in between. So that happened this week. And I've been thinking about shepherds all week, and I wondered how Juneteenth had anything to do with shepherds. And I realized maybe in this way, we often read Scripture and forget context. I've been talking about context throughout these I Am series. We also remember holidays wrong and forget the context. So let's keep remembering that. Let's keep putting that word out there. I also knew that this was Father's Day, and I thought, how does that relate to shepherds? And then it seemed easy. I had a good father, one who took care of me, and some of you had that same thing, many of you, I hope. Some of you turn to other father figures in your lives, and some of you are father figures for others. Stepfathers, uncles, men who mentor, all of those things are so important. And I thought about how a shepherd, not in the sense of the one with the sheep, but a, she a sheep, a shepherd might guide and lead us, help us to grow, help us learn how to live and be in this world. One of the things that my father always tried to teach me was when you have to speak publicly, don't hide your face in a piece of paper. I think that's a lesson that's worked out pretty well. Little did he know. My father also taught me how to play chess and was disappointed that I'm just not any good at it. Can you think of things that your father or the fathers in your life taught you? How to be one, maybe, for some of you men there, how to be a father or how not to be. One thing I often hear when families talk about when a father passes, 
work ethic seems to be something that people learned a lot. Things that you learned as your father shepherded you in life. Think about those, maybe. But as we turn to shepherds and Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd, maybe your father brought you to church and taught you something about faith. Maybe a few of you, I doubt many of you, your father actually taught you to be a shepherd. I'm not seeing a lot of those in the crowd. But I, one shepherd right here. I, shepherd? Glenn was a shepherd? I did not know that. I should have asked you to tell me a lot more about this. So did your father teach you how to be a shepherd? Perfect. Thank you for being a living example right here in the sanctuary. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it. Glenn is helpful in many ways, and now he's a person whose father taught him to be a shepherd. I did not think that would happen. Literally did not think that would happen. Thank you very much, and thank your father for teaching you how to do that. So I started to think about shepherds and all of the ways that we can think of shepherds, and I thought of shepherds in the Bible. There are a lot. I started Googling, and there's pages and pages and pages of shepherd stories in the Bible and references to shepherds. And I wondered if any of you had a favorite, a favorite shepherd story in the Bible. Anybody? Christmas, the shepherds in the field. Yes, we need those. What would the little boys and girls dress up like in their bathrobes if we didn't have shepherds, right? Anybody else have a shepherd they like to share? The parable of the lost sheep. He leaves the 99 to find the one. Very good. Good story to remind us of. Anybody else with a shepherd story? Yes, ma'am? David. Ah, David, the, the poet and shepherd at the same time. He had a lot of time to write poetry while, whilst watching the sheep, maybe. David is a great shepherd story. Anybody else? David and Goliath, he was out, yes, taking on the giant. Anybody else? No Psalm 23 people in the crowd? 23rd Psalm, thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's one that comes out King James, doesn't no matter what we do. Any other shepherds? Don't want to miss anybody. I'm sorry, Abel. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> but yes, Cain and Abel's story. Anybody else? Doug. The guys outside of Bethlehem. The shepherds outside of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? The blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. Abraham. Abraham. Oh, maybe when he takes Isaac up with the sheep and the rams. That's a tough story, but yes, Abraham was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. He's up, that's where he sees the burning bush because he's up with the sheep in the fields. Jacob and his father-in-law and the sister and sister-in-law and all of that, he had to tend sheep to pass the time before he could get to marry the next one. How about the famous shepherd story in Ezekiel? I forgot to use my cute little thing too. Let me see. Ah, there we go. Here's some images of shepherds. How many of you are familiar with the famous Ezekiel 34 shepherd story? I, I thought you all were doing so good. There were so many good examples. Uh, many of us don't know this story, including your pastor, until I started doing research. This is a great and important story, though, to help us understand further Jesus as the Good Shepherd as we stop and look at this story. I'm not going to read it all for you. You can find it later if you want to in Ezekiel 34. This is the prophet Ezekiel telling what happened, and it's bad. It's really bad. God tells Ezekiel, tell the people this. Tell the people, the people who are the leaders of the church, tell them they've messed up. Ow. Tell them they have messed up because they aren't taking care of the sheep. 
You leaders in the church are the shepherds. You Pharisees, you Sadducees, you are supposed to be taking care of my people. And instead of feeding the sheep, you're feeding yourselves. God said, I've had enough of this. You are no longer the shepherds, you leaders of the church. You're no longer the shepherds because you're doing a bad job. So now I will be the shepherd, says God. And that's what Ezekiel 34 is all about. And Jesus says, God says this, I myself will search for my sheep and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will search out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on the dark of clouds and thick darkness. God will be, God will be the shepherd uh, because the church folk weren't doing a good job of it. He goes on to tell us that they were like hired hands. Oh, it didn't stop. Can you make it stop, Michael? <laughs> Thank you. It, they were acting like hired hands, not shepherds. And he says, there's a big difference, says Ezekiel, a big difference because the hired hand doesn't care. They just take the money and do what they have to to take care of the job. But a shepherd cares. They were being bad shepherds, not as good as a hired hand. Now, I don't have anything against hired hands at all. I'm sure on the sheep ranch there were hired hands and you were glad to have them in the work they did but they don't care as much. They go from one place to the next. It's not about that particular place. It's about making a living, barely, a subsistence living at best, day to day, but they don't care. But the shepherds should care. And God said, if you aren't going to do it, I am. In some ways, that's comforting to me to think that God will step in and straighten it out. But being a church leader, it's kind of scary sometimes to think about that. You have done a bad job, church leaders, so I, God, will have to take over. But it's also comforting because if you're one of the sheep, if you're one of the people of God, which we are all God's people, if you're one of the people of God to know that God will step in and act, God will intervene, God will care for us, I like that message, don't you? Don't you like knowing that? Well, this is way back in Ezekiel, long, long ago that God steps in. And then lots of years, lots of years, centuries go on. And I'm afraid to tell you that the people of the church started doing the same thing again. They forgot to take care of the sheep. They worried about themselves, about the shepherds. And Jesus comes. And Jesus is teaching them and telling them and reminding them of the Old Testament stories. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, here's the context. When I, I am the good shepherd, it's not just any shepherd. It's not one of those church leader shepherds who's forgotten to care for the sheep. It's not someone acting as a hired hand. It's the good shepherd, just like God was. And Jesus wants us to know that and to remember that I am the good shepherd, he says, uh, just like the one back in Ezekiel. Now, we don't know that story, but people that are hearing Jesus would know. And they might have said this to themselves, oh, oh, this is just like when God took over. Why was Jesus here? to be God, the Word, dwelling among us. Because we needed to be reminded again of what it means to be a good shepherd, to care, to feed the sheep, to love them, to be sure that they are eating, being comforted, being searched for when they are lost. Maybe even proclaiming the birth of the Messiah. All of those stories that we heard and talked about as you all shared them out. We needed to be reminded, said Jesus, who the shepherd is, the good shepherd, not all these others that are proclaiming it, but the good shepherd. Thank you, Margaret, for reading that whole passage for us. There's a lot in there. But it's really about the work of the shepherd and that Jesus is doing it. He's showing the sheep the gate. He's helping them come in to be 
present with him. He's showing us that way, but it isn't enough to just say, oh, good, Jesus is the good shepherd, but we are also to be shepherds, all of us to be shepherds. The good shepherd goes all the way back to the Old Testament. This is one of my favorite I am statements. I've been letting you know which ones I like and which ones I don't. This one I like, because this is actually one of comfort. Yes, we can say we have a role to be the shepherd and that's a charge for us all to get out there and go and do. And you get that from me all the time because I firmly believe it's part of our job as Christians to be out in the world. But there's also something comforting here. Those pictures of Jesus holding the sheep, which now we kind of think, hmm, probably not a very good representation of Jesus. But that sense of Jesus holding us close, the sheep gathered around. I hope that that will bring you some comfort in your life. Because there are days when you need the Good Shepherd, not to send you out into the world, not to remind you that you haven't done things the way you should, but to say, you are my sheep. Welcome. I love you. I will care for you. Julia reminded us of that. We all need that sometimes, don't we? So for this I am statement, I'm not going to use it as a challenge at all. I'm going to say to you all, I hope you find and lo know that love of the Good Shepherd that comes from God in each of your lives. Amen. My iPad seems to be unhelpful right now. Sorry about that. Uh, this, our closing hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail, <clears throat> lets us really feel the love of God and all of the wonderful things that shepherds can be in our lives and how we can be shepherds as well. So I would invite you to stand and sing with me, Where Charity and Love Prevail. Where charity and Prevail, their God is ever found. Brought here to gather on Christ's love, by love are we thus found. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess, and let us love each other. Christian holiness. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son, as members of his body joined, we are in him made one. Love can exclude no race or creed be God's name. Our common life embraces all whose maker is the same. Before the benediction, I want to remind that you are always welcome to stay and hear the postlude. You are also always welcome to use the postlude time to filter out. We talked about that and we'll remind you because we want to continue till we get outside to have some social distancing masks going on. So enjoy the refreshments outside. Go from this place remembering who the good shepherd is and that you are loved and cared for as his sheep. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>